evening, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you may be watching this uh, video. I'm uh, transmitting from here from Wilmington, North Carolina, where the Lord has led us uh, to spend some to the beginning of the year and work with the local churches. God has blessed us with uh, an RV uh, so that uh, we can stay long periods of time uh, in, um, in an area and not be a burden to these pastors uh, where they have to put a towel and so forth. And uh, we were able to have our privacy and, and, and comfort that. Uh, but I want to talk to you this morning about uh, this is something that uh, I feel that this is something that I feel the Lord wanted me to minister along the lines of, because there's so many people that are, are they need their faith built up in, in, that, in that area. Let me see if I can flip this phone around a little bit and get, get a better angle. Uh, uh, it tells me you can't turn the phone while you're recording. I didn't know that. <laughs> so uh, I want to build your faith in that area. Uh, and faith comes by hearing, as you probably well know, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the Word of God. So if you want faith in, on, the, on the subject of healing, you have to hear the Word taught, or you have to take the promises of God and speak them out of your own mouth. So that faith comes in your heart and you can receive from God because primarily the, the way that you're going to receive from the Lord. Now, God does work through gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit operate as God wills. We don't control, control that. And so, you know, if you're going to wait for uh, the gifts of the Spirit to manifest to get your healing, you could be waiting a long time. You could be like that man that was at the pool of Bethesda that was there a long time waiting to get his healing. He was waiting for the waters to, 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 to uh, the angel to come down and stir the water. And, uh, and he was there for a very long time until Jesus came by and healed him. Uh, so we, we can get healing just basically uh, uh, based on the fact that it is our right. It's a, it's a, it's a right that we have as believers, one of our uh, privileges, one of our benefits. Uh, turn with me to Psalm 103. Uh, let's start reading with verse 1. Psalm 103, uh, verse 1 through 5. It says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Notice there are benefits more than one, plural. Who forgives all your iniquities? Well, that's a benefit. You receive forgiveness of sins. Who heals all your diseases? Not just some of them, all of them. There isn't a, there isn't a sickness and disease that God can't heal. I don't care what the medical doctor said. Now, we don't... We, we don't uh, put down doctors, thank God for what they know and the help that they give to people, but they're not the final word. I mean, the final word is what God says. And uh, God's word says, by whose stripes you were healed. He doesn't even say you're going to be healed. He says you were healed 2,000 years ago when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. We're going to find that he took away not, not just your sins, but your sickness and your diseases. And in the same way that you received the new birth and forgiveness of sins is the same way that you receive healing. How did you receive Jesus as the Lord? Well, the Bible says that you confess with him out the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, Romans 10, 9 and 10. For with the heart, with, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, or we can say with, unto healing, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, or we can say healing. So the way that you got saved is you, you, you believe that Jesus rose from the dead and you believe that in your heart and you confess him with your mouth. Well, the same way that we can receive healing is the same way uh, that we got saved. We, we confess that we're healed because the Bible says so. It doesn't say you're going to be healed. It says by whose stripes you were healed. The only reason it's not manifest in your body is because you lack knowledge or you lack faith. And that's the reason we're teaching along these lines. The Bible says in Isaiah 5, 13, my people have gone into captivity because of lack of knowledge. Uh, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And uh, so it's either lack of knowledge or lack of faith. Or in some cases, not acting on the word you know. Some people know the word, but they don't, they don't do it. It's the doer of the word that's blessed. Not to hear, James uh, 1, uh, 22 through 27. You have to be a doer of the word. And, and, and it's work to do the word. It's work. I mean, it takes effort it, it, uh, to do the word, God. Amen. Uh, but if you will do it, you'll reap the benefits of it. Now it says, who forgives all your who heals all your diseases. So uh, it doesn't make a difference what the doctor said. The doctor that said you have six months to live. What Jesus said, you'll live and not die and declare the work for the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 17, I believe, says that. Okay, so you've got to find out what the Word of God says and begin to confess with him rather than believe it in your heart. You know, Jesus put it this way, Mark 11, 23. Whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, 
but shall believe that those things that he says will come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. And Mark 11, 23, it mentions saying three times, only says, uh, it mentions believing once, because you have to major on the saying. See, as you continually speak the word of God, faith will come into your heart. And then the believing will be easier because your heart will get full of faith and and, 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 and you'll, you, you'll be able to believe God. Uh, but that's the key. you got to get into the Word. And a lot of people don't get into the Word. And, and you know, my brother and my sister, there, there's no reason why somebody can't get into the Word today. There's just no reason whatsoever. Because even if you can't afford... Now, when I was when I came up in the things of God in 1981, I got born again. I was hungry for God. And, um, you know, God called me to the ministry and I had... I had uh, sold the business and I was living off, off those savings and wanted to go to Bible school. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to do a quick work. Well, you know, money began to diminish and, and, and I, I'd go to conferences and sometimes I couldn't afford to buy the tapes and stuff and I wanted them. I couldn't afford them. Well, today, look, if you don't have the money to buy a CD or a book or something, you have all this free word being taught. I mean, you can literally go on my YouTube uh, uh, channel, which is found on our website, www.etm.org. That's edwardtommary.org. www.etm.org. That stands for End Time Ministries. And you can go on our YouTube channel, and we have 70 some videos you can watch for free. Uh, you can go on my Facebook page. For the last number of years, we've been doing these live trans transmissions in English and Spanish. And you can feed off of that and, 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 and get so full of the Word of God. Uh, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just that you have to, you had to, you know, set time aside to, to do it. That's the bottom line. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. And so, you know, they have head knowledge of the things of God, but faith is of the heart. You can't operate faith from your head. And a lot of people have mentally ascended to the truth. In other words, they know in their head that that is the truth. But they're trying to believe God with their heads, and faith is of the heart. What the heart man believes, the Bible says. Romans 10, 9 and 10, what the heart man believes. So when it's talking about the heart, it's not talking about the blood pump. It's talking about your spirit. With your spirit, you believe. And your spirit needs to get full of faith, and faith comes by hearing the word of God. So if you if you dedicate yourself time, you know, uh, to build your faith in, in whatever area that you're deficient, you know, maybe it's financial. Well, you know, we have teaching materials that you can either purchase or you can watch for free uh, on our website uh, along those lines. You can build your faith along those lines. And, I, and that, not just our ministry, there are other good ministries, such as Jerry Seville, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, excellent ministries, Jesse Duplantis. These are excellent, Bill Winston, excellent ministries that they also have uh, stuff on YouTube and, and stuff that you can feed your faith, I mean, constantly and grow up spiritually. That's how I grew up spiritually quickly because I got a hold of Brother Hagen's books and his tapes and then. I would go to his conferences and, and I would feed on the Word of God and there was things transmitted through his ministry into my heart that uh, today is still uh, effective, not only personally, but as far as my ministry goes. Amen. So, he says, Who forgives all your legal heals all your diseases, verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and the mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. That's prosperity. Amen. God wants you to be prosperous. You know, when, you, when you're broke, you can't pay your bills, you're under a lot of stress, and stress will add years to your life. Uh, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I mean that, not in, in, in longevity and decreasing the years of your life. In other words, it'll make you older, uh, uh, you may make you look older than you are, amen. Stress will do the stress, stress will kill you, actually. Uh, and, and that's the reason the devil tries to put pressure on people. He wants to, to be stressed out. And so, go with me to third, if you have your Bible, third John, the third epistle of John, verse two. Notice what it says. The third epistle of John, verse two. It says this. A little windy out here, so I'm struggling with my Bible. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Notice God wants you to prosper in all things, economically, socially, uh, and he wants you to have health. But notice that your soul prospers first. Your soul has to prosper. So your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. You'll find that in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Okay? Uh, verse... Uh, 
23 where it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You also find uh, those three parts of a man in Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 15. There it says, Daniel 7, 15. It says this. Daniel 7, 15. It says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. All right, so we see spirits all in body there. Now, when you got born again, your spirit got born again, but your, your, your soul, which is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion, didn't get born again. Your soul will be saved by the renewing of your mind. Uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, be, be changed. That word is... is is metamorphous. It's, 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 it's the, what takes place in, in, a, in a butterfly. A butterfly is an ugly little worm inside a cocoon. And it struggles and it fights and it struggles and eventually comes out of that cocoon a beautiful butterfly. Well, you know, we get born again. And uh, uh, although we've been washed by the blood, we're born again. You know, we're carnal. We still have things that are, are displeasing to the Lord uh, and that we need to get rid of. Amen. Uh, we need to work out our salvation with, with fear and trembling and get rid of these things, uh, the sins and the carnality. And it's a process. That's why it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the God, which is your reasonable service, or the Amplified Bible says your spiritual worship. And then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be changed like that butterfly. Metamorphosis changed that you may prove what is good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Well, what is perfect will of God? Well, we just read it here in verse uh, 2 of uh, the third epistle of John. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So if you want to walk in health, if you want to walk in prosperity, your soul has to prosper. You had to get reprogrammed. See, the God of this world, Satan, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, says that Satan is the God of this world. Not of the earth, but of the world, the world system. And he is working to program people's minds uh, you know I am 66 years young and I have seen such a drastic change in our society today here in America uh, regarding morality amen where where now you know uh, the Supreme Supreme Court has legalized uh, marriage between a man and a man or a woman and a woman uh, which God condemns in the Bible in the Romans the first chapter and other in other places you'll find that God calls it an abomination amen and uh, and yet today it's an acceptable behavior why is that because people's minds have been programmed and it starts in the colleges in the universities some of the our universities today at one time by Princeton and Harvard and, and Stanford and some of these other universities were actually places uh, there were, were Christian schools that, that prepared people for ministry Today, so they are some of the most liberal colleges that we have in America. Uh, why is that? Because Satan wants to program people's minds. And he starts with the young people. Amen. Uh, he starts with the young people. So that they begin to accept the things that are being taught that are contrary to the Word of God. And that's how he conforms people uh, his ways. Amen. And, away, and further away from God. And as a nation, we've gotten away from God to such an extent. When I was a younger man, you know, in the 60s, I was a teenager. I didn't understand what was what was happening. I didn't like Sundays because Sundays everything was closed. Uh, they were called blue laws. Uh, nobody opened. Maybe maybe you know the little uh, soda uh, soda shop uh, at the corner of the candy store may have maybe open, but every, everybody closed. Uh, they either went to church or they spent time with their family and they honored God. And there was a difference be on on Sunday. There, there, there was a peace. There was a. It was. I didn't understand it back then. I didn't like it because I was a kid, you know, and I didn't like the fact that everything was open. And it was just a tranquility. And I believe it was a blessing of God upon our nation because we were honoring him on that day. We were taking the day to either go to, go to church or spend time with our families and rest. And we were honoring God. And God, God said, I'm going to bless him for that. Same thing with Christmas. They called it a Christmas spirit. Amen. I haven't sensed the Christmas spirit, I don't know how many years back, because there isn't. It's all, it's all about money now. It's all about merchandise. It's all about, and it's all about being politically correct. They don't even say Merry Christmas anymore. It's Happy Holidays. <clears throat> and, uh, and so there is no, there, there is no, there is no a Christmas spirit. Amen. Uh, what, what they call Christmas spirit. I believe it's the, the, the 
presence of God permeating our nation because we took December 25th, although Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, but that's the day that, that was chosen to honor his birth. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and we celebrated it and people sang about Christ and about Christ coming and carols and stuff and spent time with family. Now we don't see that anymore. I mean, uh, it's all about money. Uh, so, you know, we've lost that blessing. We've lost that blessing and uh, we need to get it back. We should be praying for America. I have a video on my YouTube channel called The Only Thing That Will Save America. And uh, you should listen to it and pray for America. We need a great awakening in America. We need a, a, a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God in America. Amen. So God can heal our nation. And uh, we can be uh, great once again because we have so much strife and division and hatred going on today in government. It's, it, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, and and then that has to change. And it only changes Christians begin to fervently intercede for their nation. Amen. And it's our duty to. The Bible tells us over in the book of Timothy, that we're to pray for those that are in authority. I think it's First Timothy 2, I'll give you the scripture, uh, that we're to pray for those that are in authority. Uh, uh, let's see, it's, uh, no, it's second, uh, let's see, First uh, Timothy, Yeah, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 5. We should be praying for those that are in authority in our nation, that we may have uh, peace and tranquility. So, uh, again, uh, we saw in 3 John, verse 2, Beloved, I wish you all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. If you're going to receive from God, you've got to get your mind renewed. Now, like I said, you you can be healed uh, by gifts of the Spirit, gifts of healing, uh, uh you know, working a miracle and so forth. But those things operate as God wills. And I, I've, I've learned throughout the years that the gifts of the Spirit usually work for non-believers or baby Christians that never heard the word taught like I'm teaching you now. If you're sitting in a good church uh, with a good pastor that teaches these things, word of faith, uh, you know, God expects for you to get it on your own faith through His covenant. Uh, uh, but, you know, people that are you know in a denominational church where they don't teach these things or somebody that's in the world they can be healed many times through gifts of the spirit uh and receive healing that way but you as a mature christian need to get it through your own faith and if you're going to get it you need to get your mind renewed to the word of god and spend enough time to get the word of god in your heart see the word of god has to become a reality inside of your spirit first before you can have a manifestation outwardly you know before this motorhome uh, manifested I, I had already known it in my heart. I already, because I had confessed it enough times. It took us two years, you know, believe in God. Uh, confessed it enough times until it manifested. And I knew it inwardly. I told my wife, I said, I, 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 got, I got it, got it. I knew it in here. Uh, because because I c continually confessed it. And, and it's, it's, it's labor to do that. I mean, you, you can ask my wife, I would do that at least three times a day that I believe I received my, my, my Jayco 31 V-Class A motorhome. And I would confess that over and over, amen. Uh, and it became real in my spirit. And once, once I knew it, I, once it was in my spirit, it wasn't long before it manifested in the, in the natural. And that's how, that's how it works. So, you know, you want healing, you got to get in the Word. You want prosperity, you got to get into the Word. It's just, it's just that simple, amen. It's, it's a process. Let, let, let's turn with me to Mark, the fifth chapter. And let's read a story here of how a woman received healing for her body. And she had a, she had an incurable disease, and um, had suffered much, spent all her money. So let's let's read this, starting with verse 21 of Mark chapter 5. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. A great multitude means there were so many people there you couldn't count them. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. Now, I want you to notice how he believed that God, and God doesn't just have one way of healing you. You know, there are various ways in the Word of God anointing with oil, laying on of hands, the, you know, the, the prayer of faith. But he believed that if Jesus came and laid his hand on his daughter, she would be healed. And that was his confession of faith. He came to Jesus, made that confession of faith, believing. And so it says, 
So Jesus went with him. Why did he go with him? Because he had faith. Now, all these other people that were touching Jesus didn't have faith. They were hoping and praying that he would get something. They were all trying, to, uh, pressing upon him, touching him, but they weren't receiving anything. The reason that we're doing that, because if you go back to Mark's second chapter, you'll find that the Jesus uh, had been in other places, and people just touched the hem of his garments and his clothes, and they were healed. So that's where they were doing. But they weren't getting anything, because you don't get it by hoping and praying. You get it by believing. And this man believed. He said, if you come lay your hands on my daughter, she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Thronged him means they pressed upon him. So now the crowd has grown bigger. Now, now it's not just a multitude, it's a great multitude. So many people, you can't count them. Nobody's getting nothing. So the only one that has faith is Jairus, and Jesus headed towards his house. Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians, and she spent all she had and was no better but rather grew worse. So she was in a hopeless situation. She had spent all her money. She had this, this flow of blood uh, for 12 years. Well, and, and, you know, if you have a flow of blood for 12 years, you, you, you're weak. She has spent all her money. God only knows what kind of experiments they did with her trying to, to fix the problem. So she was probably facing depression. But when she heard about Jesus, so whatever you may be going through, you never run from God. You run to God. Amen. And you hear about Jesus. When you're going through trouble, when you're feeling down, run to the Word. Get yourself a good teaching, preaching tape, put it on, listen to the word being preached. It'll get you out of that situation. Yeah? That's what she said. She heard about Jesus. And she came behind him in the crowd and touched the, his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I should be made well. And in the, the little uh, Greek, it says, she, con she continually said, or she kept saying. The Amplified Bible actually translated that, translate that way. She kept saying she kept saying, if I want to give him his arm, I should be made well. If I want to give him his arm, I should be made well. Now, she found that where Jesus was. She went to where he was in her weakened state. And under the law, I believe it's Leviticus 26 or so, she was unclean. She could have been stoned to death. Amen. She was unclean. She, she could not be in, in, uh, among other people. Because if they came in contact with her, they also would be unclean. And then they would have to go and spend money and, and, and would an, buy, purchase an offering and take it to the priest and so they'd be cleansed. She was unclean. So she heard about Jesus and she acted upon uh, on, 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 in faith and went to him. Amen. She went to the word. Jesus is the word. And and she kept saying, if I want to touch the heaven's garment, I should be made whole. If I want to touch the heaven's garment, I should be made whole. See, your saying is very, very important. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful to the promise. That word wavering is the word doubt. Don't doubt. So it says, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? See, Jesus was ministering under the anointing. I mean, that's the primary way he ministered, under the anointing. And all the other people that were touching him were not touching him with faith because he never felt power leave him. And I, I know what that's about because that's the primary way I minister with the anointing. And I've laid hands on people, the anointing is strong on me, but it doesn't flow into them because they're not believing. Uh, yet on the other hand, I've had people that have come for me to lay hands on them. Sometimes they don't even, they don't even get to reach me and they fall out of the power of God and I feel that power go right out of me into them because they're coming in faith. So. He said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? In other words, they said, Jesus, there are a lot of people uh, touching you. Look at this whole crowd is touching you. What are you asking? Who touched you? And he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling. Uh, that's the Leviticus 15, 25, where, where, that un where uh, the issue with the, the unclean uh, person with, with the blood. Not 26. And, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Why was she fearing and trembling? Well, because she, was, she could have been stoned to death. And Jairus was there, ruler of the synagogue, who had the authority to command her to be stoned. And so she told Jesus what happened. She told him the whole testimony. And verse 34, and he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. What made her well? Your, her faith. See, the primary way that you and I are going to get our healing is through, through faith. Amen. Through faith. 
Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your, do your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Why did Jesus say that? Because Jesus knew that those people that came were inspired by the devil to rob Jairus of his faith. Amen. And the thing that comes to rob your faith is the spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1.7 says, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. When you're believing God, amen, the spirit of fear will attack you. And uh, you have to resist that spirit. The Bible says in James 4, 7, 4, 6, submit to God. Who is God? The Word. John, the first chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was Word, the Word was, was God. All right. So submit to the Word, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So when fear tries to come upon you, you have to resist it. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> these people that came, they didn't care anything about Jesus. You're going to find out later on. They actually mocked him when he came to, to, to uh, raise his daughter from the dead. Uh, this was just people inspired or sent by the devil to try to rob the faith of Jairus. I want you to notice something about Jairus. Number one, Jairus didn't get mad because the woman held up Jesus and going to his house. He didn't throw a, a, a temper tantrum and start, you know, cursing at the woman or getting mad at her. You know, she, my daughter, wouldn't be dead if you hadn't held things up, you unclean witch. And he could have he gotten the flesh and said, oh, he didn't do that. Amen. Because faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6. All right. The other thing he did is when Jesus told him, he said to him, uh, Jesus said to him, do not be afraid, only believe. He, he chose not to be afraid and to believe, and so he didn't say one other thing. He had already made his confession of faith. If you come to my and lay your hands on the shoes, you'll be healed. So he kept believing that. He didn't say anything else. He kept his mouth shut. Sometimes that's, that's the best thing we can do is keep our mouth shut in service, you know, when we're under pressure. He kept his mouth shut and continued to believe. So, verse 37, And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. Then they ridiculed him. So those people that went over there worried about the master didn't give a flying flip about Jesus. I mean, we see the attitude here. They ridiculed him. But when he put them all aside, he took the father and mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which is plans the little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. And he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given to her to eat. So we see two miracles take place here by these people's faith. We see how they acted. Amen. Sorry for the background noise, but it seems like they just started cutting something back here. And then some guy's fixing his motorhome over there. So that's all the racket that you hear. But uh, I want to pray for you. Maybe, maybe you're experiencing sickness and disease right now in your body, pain or whatever. I want you to, as a point of contact, I want you to stretch out your hand and put it on your screen there where my hand is. And I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that your hand is not short that you can't say or you're dull that you can't hear and i'm asking you now in the name of jesus to release the power of the living god and touch those bodies that are that are sick i command sickness to go from their bodies and healing to come in the mighty and powerful name of jesus and we thank you for doing it now receive that i sense that anointing leaving my hand right now receive it in the name of jesus be healed of your infirmity be healed of your pain be free in Jesus' name. Now, if you have received healing today in your body, leave us a, a note there. Share with us your testimony. We always love to hear from you. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed what I've shared from the Word of God. And uh, have a glorious and blessed rest of the day or evening. Amen.